So forgive my moody lighting, but it's so I can uh, do a special camera trick here in a little bit. Um, so last week, I asked this question, what happens if you take an inverter's output and connect it to its input? And it turns out we're somewhere in this zone, right? It depends on the logic type that we're using, if we're using TTL or CMOS. Um, but we're going to have uh, some middle state, right? Either some sort of oscillation or we're going to be at a halfway point, which is what we saw for our CMOS gates. But a commenter, or actually a couple commenters, had pointed out that this is probably going to get really hot. And so I was like, yeah, it probably would, wouldn't it? I didn't really feel it, and so I thought that might be a good follow-up video to see if it really is getting hot. And so I've got two ways to check this out. One, I've got a thermal camera here, and so that'll be a nice visual thing that I can show you right on the camera. Um, but arguably a better way to check if things are getting hot is actually for me to measure the current. And so I'm going to do that as well. So let me show you my setup. So over in the corner, I've already got the um, power supply ready to show you. Um, but I've also got my actual circuit here. And I've got three gates for us. One is the CD4049. And this is our CMOS gate. And right now, uh, this is kind of our proof. This is just to show what a regular gate should look like. And that means I've got my inputs just connected to one and my outputs are floating, but they should be generating zeros. And then I've got another CMOS gate, right? This is a CD4049 as well, but this one has its inputs connected to its outputs. Um, and so I, I did each channel, right? There's six channels on this inverter and I have all of them wired up to their own their inputs connected to their own outputs, just to have a maximum effect here. And finally, this is a 74 LSO4. This is a TTL chip, um, and I've also got its inputs connected to its outputs. And so let's look at the thermal camera here. Let's see how well this shows up. Yeah, so check it out. At the left, we can see almost nothing. It's cold, right? Uh, so it's about at ambient. And in the middle, we see a little bit of brightness, right? There's definitely some temperature output, but that's really overshadowed by our TTL chip on the right, which is much, much, much hotter. So just to be a little bit more precise, because this thermal camera um, can be hard to make really precise measurements on, on small things, I, I use a thermal couple, and I know our ambient is at 72 degrees in this office, and this guy was at 74 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's a little bit hotter than ambient. This guy was at around 76, and this guy is at 79. Um, so there's a reasonable difference there. It's not like it's a little warm to the touch. I could totally feel it, um, but this guy, it's cool, right? I gotta actually feel it, you know, taking the heat out of my hand. So let's. Let's look at the current now and see if that helps illuminate this situation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn all of them off here. So you can see my, uh, my readout on my power, um, my power supply isn't perfect, right? I got a negative 0.2 milliamps here, but when I turn on my, uh, when I turn on my regular chip that's kind of wired in a normal mode, I don't really see any currents, negligible essentially. When I turn on my kind of goofy circuit where my inputs are connected to my outputs, I see six milliamps. So right, we barely could measure anything for this one and now we're definitely measuring something here. And now finally, let's uh, check out our TTL chip. Boom, 45 milliamps. So uh, a much larger current. And unfortunately I don't have another um, SO4 TTL inverter um, to test with, but I know that the current is, should be much smaller. So let's take a look at the data sheet and see if we can kind of kind of explain what's going on here. So this first one is our CMOS chip. And so, right, we've got some MOSFETs, metal oxide semi semiconductor field effect transistors. Um, they got two of them, an N channel and P channel one. We've got these diodes here, and these diodes are basically just for protecting the circuits, right, from over voltage and things like that. Now, um, the thing to note, right, if I zoom in here, oh, I can't zoom. Um, the thing to note 
is that CMOS, uh, or rather MOSFETs, their gates kind of have these capacitors. And so when you're changing the state of a MOSFET, you're charging up this capacitor one way or the other. But when you are at a static state, right, that capacitor isn't charging up at all. It's just staying where it's at. And so um, I think the reason why our CMOS is much cooler than our TTL is because even though we're at some weird undefined state, we're not at a transient state. Or we kind of are, right? We, we, there might be some little bouncing back and forth, um, but we're more or less at a static state, and so that means that these capacitors aren't changing their charges at all, and there's not as much current draw. Whereas our TTL, right, you can see we've got four bipolar junction transistors here, and um, BJTs require a certain amount of current in order to be working properly. Um, and typically these guys are made to be in some sort of saturation all the way on or all the way off. Um, but in this case, they're all partially on. And so when they're partially on, they're almost wor working as resistors. And so that makes sense that we'd have this um, larger power draw and this heat dissipation. So if you go back to our circuit here, um, oops, that's not our circuit. Here's our circuit. Uh, this, this isn't something that you would normally do when you just haven't, you wouldn't just have an inverter connected to its um, own output. However, what this does do is it kind of gives us an idea of our transients for different logic devices. So transients happen whenever an input changes and you, it's causing you to change your current state. And something that, that makes us conscious of is when you make a regular digital logic circuit, if we're increasing our frequency, right, trying to increase the frequency that we do our calculations or run our processing steps or whatever it might be, um, as we do that, it does come at certain costs. One, of course, it takes time for these gates to change their state, but two, every time you change, it does dissipate a certain amount of heat. And so that heat, um, the faster you go, the more that heat accumulates. So it's something to be aware of um, with digital logic devices. So thank you so much for the commenters that um, had kind of recommended this because it was a pretty cool experiment. Um, so if you have any other ideas for other experiments, please share them because I want to give them a shot.